Good morning, dear students. Uh, myself, Dr. V. Hari Priya, working as Associate Professor, Department of Humanities and Sciences, MLR Institute of Technology. So far, uh, we discussed about uh, energy sources that is related to fuels, solid fuels, liquid fuels, how they can be prepared, synthesized, their properties, and what are the artificial methods for preparing uh, those liquid fuels, the refining techniques, applications, all these things. So far, we discussed in the previous sessions. In today's session, we are going to discuss about gaseous fuels. We are going to discuss about gaseous fuels. In gaseous fuels, natural existing one it is natural gas. Natural gas is the best example for natural existing gaseous fuel. How it can be extracted from the earth's core? What are its properties and uh, chemical composition? And then what are the applications towards domestic as well as industrial uh, site? And the second and most important application um, example for gaseous fuel it is LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, and then uh, compressed natural gas. So these three examples for gaseous fuel in today's session we are going to discuss about. So let us go for that one. So let us start with the first naturally existing uh, gaseous fuel that is natural gas. It is a naturally occurring fuel that contains mixture of hydrocarbons and uh, most of that is of methane, 97 percent it will contain methane that is primarily it is composed of methane it is of 97 percent. So, it is present in earth's core basing on its occurrence in the earth's core it can be divided or it is existing in two different forms that is dry gas and wet gas. That means as we know very well that last layer of uh, Earth's core it is of brine solution, brine solution is nothing but NaCl. Upon that we can have this natural gas, upon that we will have crude oil, upon that we will have coal mines and then we will go for mineral deposits upon that layer and then soil, soil will contain fertile sediments. So, this is the surface of the earth that is nothing but soil we will call it as. First layer it is of fertile sediments, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Second layer it is of mineral deposits. So like that if you go very deep into the earth's core, last but one layer it is of natural gas. Upon that we can find this liquid uh, fuel that is crude oil. So if this natural gas sometimes it is associated with this crude oil, that means both will exist in the same layer. Basing on its presence in the earth's core, it is of, it is existing or it is available in two different forms, one is dry gas and other one it is wet gas. So, dry gas will have a chemical composition of that means carbon content will be from C1 to C4, maybe of alkane, alkane, anything, but chem carbon's number will be 1 to 4 and then wet gas it is from C3 to C4 only. Okay. So, let us see with its uh, chemical composition. As I told you, it is having a major uh, component as methane. So, methane can be of uh, 70 to 90 percent, this is considered to be the major one. And the next one it is benzene that is from 5 to 10 percent and uh, minor uh, component it is of hydrogen it is of 3 percent and the rest will be that means remaining percentage will be of carbon dioxide CO2 and CO, rest means remaining. So, this is the chemical composition of natural gas. So, and how it can be measured means it is measured using standard cubic meters. So, as I told you it is an example best example for naturally occurring uh, gaseous fuel, first best example natural gas and uh, basing on its formation in the earth's core, it can be of two different forms, it exists in two different forms, dry gas and wet gas and uh, coming to its chemical composition, it will contain methane that is from 70 to 90 percent and then benzene 5 to 10 percent and then hydrogen 3 percent and the rest will be the mixture of uh, CO2 and CO. Let us go with its properties. So, properties include First and most important thing is natural gas it is colorless, it does not have any, it does not possess any kind of color. At the same time it is odorless, no smell it will have and then non-toxic in nature that means it is not poisonous and then uh, it is lighter than air, it is very lightest one, lighter than air that is why it can be easily stored and uh, available abundant in nature and it possesses a very high calorific value that is of 12,000 to 14,000 range kilocalories per meter cube. So, and coming to its application part. So, as we know generally it is very much useful for uh, running uh, vehicles that is for transportation purpose and can be used as a fuel for uh, cooking purpose 
and uh, using this natural gas we can generate electricity and then uh, used in the manufacturing of lpg that is considered to be a primary uh, um, i mean secondary fuel from which we can prepare that is liquefied petroleum gas this is best example for uh, domestic fuel lpg liquefied petroleum gas this can be produced when natural gas it is treated to remove its content like propane propene butane and butene then uh, it will convert into the form of lpg that is liquefied petroleum gas so this is the most important application and uh, almost all the fuels will have a common application that is for transportation purpose it is generally used apart from these few will have specific uh, applications so for that they will be used so and uh, coming to the next one that is liquefied petroleum gas that is lpg so how it can be prepared means in two different uh, ways it can be prepared in two different ways what is the first one from natural gas just now we discussed so when natural gas it is treated to remove its content like propane propene butene and butene so this uh, lpg that is liquefied petroleum gas will be produced so and what is the other method to prepare lpg that is during fractional distillation of crude oil that means at less than 30 degrees centigrade the temperature range it is reached during the refining of uh, petroleum or we will call it as crude oil that is distillation part after entering into the, or after passing that crude oil into the front all fractionating column after reaching their certain boiling range each fraction gets separated out at that time if the temperature it is less than 30 degrees centigrade that is around room temperature that uh, this lpg that is liquefied petroleum gas formation will take place that is what we call it as uncondensed gases they never involve in condensation because they are that uh, crude oil has reached um, room temperature that means less than 30 degrees centigrade so its boiling range it is at room temperature so it will not condense that uncondensed gases under the name lpg we are going to use as domestic uh, fuel for cooking purpose so these are the two methods using which we can prepare lpg and uh, coming to its chemical composition it will contain ambutane isobutane butylene and propane so ambutane it is uh, and isobutane are considered to be the major components and uh, next uh, minor components will butylene and propane so and then uh, whenever it is subjected to combustion reaction how much amount of heat energy it is able to generate that is its calorific value it is 27800 kilo calories per meter cube so it is very high and compared to natural gas also it is very high around 14000 uh, kilo calories per meter cube it is able to generate natural gas but coming to this lpg it is 27800 it is very high and uh, let us discuss with its properties so first one it is it is highly volatile in nature lpg it is highly volatile in nature that means it can be easily evaporated and uh, just like natural gas it is also colorless and this lpg possess very good anti knocking properties in uh, previous sessions we discussed about uh, knocking and uh, anti knocking properties and also we discussed about uh, few examples for anti knocking agents petrol based and uh, diesel based engines so in that uh, session we discussed about this anti knocking property this lpg will have very good anti knocking properties and we know very well uh, most important uh, application one and only one that is it is used as a fuel for domestic as well as industrial purposes let us go with the last example of gaseous fuels that is compressed natural gas under uh, cng we will call that one cng stands for compressed natural gas how it can be prepared so it is prepared for this also we are going to make use of natural gas and it is prepared by compressing natural gas to less than 1% of the volume that it occupies at stp stp stands for standard temperature and pressure at stp how much volume it is going to occupy so comparing to that one 1% of volume we have to reduce by compressing that natural gas so then only cng will be produced so it is prepared by compressing natural gas to less than 1% of volume it occupies at stp standard temperature and pressure so and then that is allowed to store in a hot spherical container and uh, a pressure under a certain pressure range of uh, 200 to 245 kg per cm square so this is preparation of cng and its storage so it is to be produced by compressing natural gas to less than 1% of volume that it occupies at stp and then it, it is to be stored in a hard material 
which is having a spherical shape such kind of container we have to make use under some pressure that is in the range of 200 to 245 kilograms per centimeter square it is to be stored then we will call that one as cng compressed natural gas and uh, it is just like the remaining uh, gaseous fuels just now we discussed it is also odorless in nature and purely non toxic in nature non toxic means it is not so poisonous it is light in weight just like natural gas and easily mixes with air like uh, natural gas and then uh, most important thing related to this one it is it possesses a very high ignition temperature that is 540 degrees centigrade so it is having a very high ignition temperature that is the most important property and uh, just like uh, natural gas it is also measured in a different using different units such as gge gasoline gallon equivalent so using gge cng can be measured or expressed uh, that is gge stands for gasoline ga uh, gallon equivalent and then coming to its composition 90% of methane it will have it will contain only methane as major constituent and the remaining rest will be of uh, mixture of ethane propane and the gases like nitrogen and carbon monoxide so and uh, it is able to produce whenever it is used as a fuel for running uh, vehicles and all for combustion reaction purpose it is able to produce a calorific value of uh, 215.1 kilocalories per centimeter cube so or sometimes it can be uh, expressed in terms of kilojoules also if it is that is the case 900 kilojoules per mole it is able to produce so this is about uh, today's session so let us go with the summary part so for what we have discussed we started with gaseous fuels under the heading of gaseous fuels we have only three in our syllabus first one it is natural gas it is the best example for primary fuel as well as gaseous fuel and the second one it is lpg liquefied petroleum gas which is obtained by using natural gas that means it is an example for secondary fuel secondary gaseous fuel we can call like and lastly we discussed about cng that is compressed natural gas and how it can be prepared means using same thing natural gas using we can prepare uh, cng it is also an example for secondary gaseous fuel so but about all these three it is just like a basic kind of knowledge not very deep into these uh, topics we have in our syllabus just introduction its chemical composition how it can be prepared and then what are its properties and then applications that's all for today's class thank you so much